Okay, so let's get into the heart of the subject. We're going to run our first Kafka Streams application. So we're not going to code it. We're not going to analyze code right now. We're just going to see how to run it, see what it does, understand how Kafka Streams work at a high level, just as an introduction, okay, to ease into it. So first, we're going to download the Kafka binaries because we're going to run Kafka in a different way before we run Kafka using Landoop. And in this course, I want to show you how to run Kafka using the binaries. It's very important that you know how you both work, you know how to you know, which one you prefer, et cetera, et cetera. It really matters uh, for you to understand the full extent of how these Landoop things work. So we're going to start Zookeeper and Kafka using these binaries, and it's going to be very easy. We're then going to create an output uh, topics using the Kafka topics command that you already know. Then we're going to publish data to the input topic. We're going to run the word count example. Uh, it's a Kafka streams application that's provided with Kafka as an example and word count does what it does what it says it's just counts words in sentences so we're going to see this example and then we're going to stream uh, the output topic using a kafka console producer uh, consumer okay so uh, a full rundown of everything you've seen except uh, the word count example and you know launching kafka using the binaries but it's going to be very easy uh, very hands-on ready because that's that's the course it's going to be, be hands-on and you're going to learn something already so let's get going okay so if you go on google and search for apache kafka uh, take the first link you're basically uh, into the kafka website and what i want you to do is basically download kafka so in the bottom left there's a download button right here that you can click and it says 0.11.0 is the latest release um, that you should get. So Kafka does releases every three months, basically. So this can change, and I know the next version will be 1.0. So do not be afraid if the next version is called 1.0. Um, it's planned, and it won't change much. Pretty much all the APIs are the same, okay? So this course is still very valid for 1.0, and if it's not, I'll do something about it. So you can uh, download Kafka using the binary downloads, so Kafka 2.11 or Kafka 2.12 for Scala, and basically it's pretty much the same. They recommend Kafka 2.11, so let's just do that. Um, and we click on Kafka 2.11, and we get to this Apache mirror, so we just take the first thing that they suggest, and here we go, it downloads Kafka. So I'll just meet you uh, once you've downloaded Kafka and uncompressed it. This is a TGZ file, so it's, it's being zipped. So use WinRAR if you're on Windows, or any other uh, application if you're on Linux or Mac. Okay, so next. Once the Kafka has been uh, unpacked, basically you're going to get uh, f four folders, okay, six folders, you're going to uh, four folders, bin, config, libs, and site doc, and you're going to get a license, a license and a notice. So that means you've successfully uncompressed Kafka and it's there. To use so i want you to launch uh, a few terminals i have five terminals right here so it's going to be enough because we're going to do lots of things okay so the first thing we're going to do is to launch zookeeper so to launch zookeeper i provided you some code in this uh, resources of this lecture so please do look for it it's course intro mac or course intro windows so the commands are going to be different slightly if you're on mac or windows i have not tested those on windows but they should work okay if they don't, please leave me a message and I will update this lecture accordingly. Um, but for Linux, it's pretty much the same thing, okay? It's just the way you call things that is different. So if you're a Windows user, still look like this lecture, it's very, very relevant. So we open a shell and we're going to start the Zookeeper server. So starting Zookeeper is just calling bin zookeeper server start.sh and then we join the config for Zookeeper. So we won't look at the conflict of Zookeeper right now. If you really want an understanding of Zookeeper and Kafka, how to set it up, uh, please look at my Kafka setup course. In this one, we're just going to press enter. And what this will do is that it will I'll put a lot of log and at the end, you see it says binding to port um, 2181, which is great. So that means Zookeeper is launched. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to launch Kafka now that Zookeeper is launched. So launching Kafka is easy. You just run another command and it's right here. And I'm gonna to go to my second terminal. Okay, do not do not stop that one uh, terminal, okay, or command line. You have to keep it open, otherwise the keeper will not uh, work. And you just do bin kafka server start.sh and then you join the config for kafka. And press enter, all the defaults are fine. 
and what happens is that you get again a lot of log okay this is all the config from kafka but at the end you get info kafka server zero started um, and the kafka version is zero eleven zero zero so all this is very good if you don't have this um, please let me know but that might be because the port is already used on your machine so make sure nothing is using the port 2181 or 9092 but this should work on every single machine so at this stage we have kafka and zookeeper uh, launched okay and zookeeper did uh, create more log okay so now that kafka and zookeeper are launched we can start using our regular kafka commands so the first one is going to create an input topic and for this thing, we're going to create a streams file input topic, okay? And that's just the way it's named. So we've used the Kafka topics command in um, in other courses, okay? But now, because it's we downloaded the Kafka binaries, you have to call it using bin slash Kafka topics.sh. It's nothing different. It's just the way you call it, okay, on your file system. So I'm going to copy it and we're going to reference zookeeper so zookeeper is going to be at localhost 2181 for everyone okay everyone in this course will have zookeeper and kafka locally on port 2181 the replication factor has to be one because we only have one broker and we're going to have three partitions okay for that topic and the topic name is trim file inputs so hopefully nothing new if you followed my um, basics kafka course so let's go to another uh, window and press enter at this stage, it says create a topic, streams file input. So that's great. Now let's do the same and create the output topic. So the only difference in this comment is that the output topic is called streams word count output. So let's go ahead and in the same window, we can just create that topic. All right, done. So we can we can check that the topics have been created uh, doing Kafka topics that I said, slash slash um, dash dash list zookeeper localhost 2181 and that should do it and we see that we have streams file input and streams workout input uh, output so so far so good right so now what we're going to do is publish some data to streams file input so to do this we launch a kafka producer okay and i'm just going to type it right here we do bin kafka console producer dot sh and then the topic is streams file input and then the broker list is localhost 9092 so 9092 is the port of kafka and localhost is uh, for everyone okay it's also the same as writing by the way 127.0.0.1.9092 okay localhost is this ip so once we're there, um, you see there is a little error right here, which means you can start writing stuff. So we need to start writing some data and basically sentences of words separated by spaces. So I recommend you just uh, enter Kafka Streams Udemy, Kafka Data Processing, and Kafka Streams Course. So Kafka Streams Udemy, enter. Kafka Streams Course, Kafka Data Processing. Okay. So here we can see already that the word kafka is three times the word streams is two times and then udemy course data and processing are one time so the word count we can already know what the result of it should be now to break out of this window we press ctrl c and we're out so how do we make sure that um, the data has been written to this topic we can do a kafka console consumer sh we do the topic streams file inputs and the bootstrap server bootstrap server is uh, again the same the same URL okay and we're going to add so 127.0.0.1.9.0.9.2 and then the from beginning flag okay to make sure that we fetch all this data that already has been written so we press enter and the result we get is these three uh, things that we wrote so that's pretty awesome right and we've seen this in the kafka for beginners course nothing new here just good to practice these things we press ctrl c to break out of it so now we know that we've wrote the data to the streams file input and that the data has been you know read so it's all fine now we're going to do the important thing which is to launch 
our streams application. Okay, so first we're going to start a consumer on the output topic, and this command right here is very long. Okay, uh, the reason is we're going to just provide more options to our Kafka console consumer so it understands um, how to interpret the messages, and we're also going to print the key and the value. Okay, for now. So we're going to read the streams workout output from the beginning. And the formatter is going to be just a default default message from header, we're going to print the keys and the values, which is great. And the keys are going to be strings, and the values are going to be longs. So you'll see what that means when we start coding, okay. But what this does is that we start um, printing basically a consumer that will print the keys and the values. So let's just copy this whole command. Okay and we're going to paste it in this window. So as now you should see nothing, okay, it just hangs because it's waiting for messages to be sent. So we have Zookeeper in the first one, we have Kafka on the second one, okay, and then we have this uh, console consumer um, on the third terminal. Now on the fourth terminal, we should actually launch our streams application. So it's very easy. There is something called bin Kafka run class.sh to run any class in Kafka. And it's already programmed. The application is called work count demo. So we're going to just run this and see what happens. So after five seconds, it basically exited and we've seen no output. But let's see what happens in the third. Uh, window and in the third window, we've seen that now we're getting some uh, output um, that the data has been processed. So let's look at what the output is, and that's very very important for you to look at this. Data is one. That means that the count of the word data is one. Course is one. Udemy is one, and Kafka is one. And you may say, wait, isn't Kafka supposed to be three? Well, yes, it's supposed to be three, but at first it's going to be one because it reads messages one by one. And so the count will be updated over time, okay, because this is streaming, okay, this is not like a one time analysis. This is literally, as you stream data, the counts are updated. Uh, processing is one. And then you see that Kafka is read again. So it says Kafka is now two. And there is the word Kafka again, so it's now three. And then same for streams, streams is one, and then streams is two. So what are um, word count application did is publish to this topic, the output topic, it published a word count as it saw it, really, as it saw the words coming, it updated the word count. And so that's pretty awesome when you think about it. Um, Kafka, it was one, then it's two, then it's three, uh, and stream is one, then it's two. So we really get a streaming word count. And you could play by publishing more messages to this topic. And running this uh, word count application again, and you could see these counts being updated. But this is this is the power of Kafka streams. Okay, this is really what makes Kafka streams really good, is that you can now get a streaming application that does some really um, complicated transformations, and output this to a topic that people can stream. So that's like a quick overview. Finally, uh, it's always good to run the Kafka topics command. So here it is and list the topics. And we'll see something in this course is that there is two internal topics that were created. Okay, remember, we created the streams file input, and we created the streams work count output. But um, two topics were created, which is a streams work count counts change log, and stream work counts counts repartition. And we didn't create those the Kafka streams application created those and these are called internal topics. So we'll really see the meaning of those in the class. But so just to summarize right here, which is pretty awesome, we've basically run our first Kafka streams application that read a topic, computed the word counts over time, as it received messages, and output the messages uh, to a final uh, topic. So hope you're excited. That was like a high level overview of Kafka streams. Okay, we just run our first application. We haven't seen what the code is, we'll see that in the next section. But I just wanted to show you what a Kafka streams application could do. Okay, so, all right, I'll see you in the next lecture.